Hi, Andrea. How are you? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Doing fantastic. Excited to talk to you and uh, want to get into the album and, of course, the Dio show and and get your opinion on a couple of things. But, man, I'm always curious when uh, when when I come across a singer like yourself that has such an amazing voice. Thank you. <laughs> I, even though I talk on the radio, I could never imagine singing. But I'm curious, did you discover it at a young age? Did someone tell you, like, hey, you could sing? When did you realize that you could sing? I think I haven't even realized it. My uncle told me I thought I was listening to the radio when I was, like, four years old singing. So oh, wow. it just happens, you know, when we are little, like the singers, when we're, like, kids and we're singing. It just comes out naturally. Of course, I have evolved my talent through the years, you know, but... You know how it is. <laughs> so it was discovered the, at a young age. Yeah. The young the uncle said, Hey, you, you can actually do this. Yeah, yeah. Even when I was grown up, when I was 13 and I started singing a lot, recording myself into those old tape recorders, if you can remember, you know, yeah. like it had the mic on and I would put my headphones on and I would listen to my voice at the same time with the cassette. And it was like, Oh my god, I, I can do that, you know, I just uh voice over the singer and sure. I can do it sometimes better. And I was like, wow. And then I, I kept on pra practicing and practicing, and then I got into where I am now. <laughs> I love it. I love hearing that journey because I'm I'm a failed drummer. That's how I got into the radio side of things. But I'm always curious with singers because that's that takes a lot of gusto and courage to stand up there and belt it out, and especially like the way you do. So. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's a muscle, you know, it's like athletes with sports and stuff. It's something that needs to be trained when you realize that you have some type of talent, you know, like all the sports guys, they have a specific sure. body type and they do the uh, the sports that their feet in. So it's the same with us, you know, it's a type of different sport. <laughs> Totally. Well, I'm loving the debut album and Skies, which is out now. And kind of curious, how did you hook up with Jay Rustin for it? I mean, he's a legend in the in the business. He is a legend. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I wanted Jay from the very beginning, uh, before I was starting doing some metal songs, and I wanted to see how they sounded. So Jay it really helped me out and said, look, Andrew, I'm going to do, you know, a couple of songs for you to see how. And I said, OK, I think I got this. I mean, I think I can write metal, so I'll just keep on doing it the way that I'm doing it. You know, like I'm not going to be into uh, you know molded uh patterns of how other people do it i'm going to uh think outside of the box and do it my own way as i feel you know songwriting progression wise etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah jay is a great guy he is my uh musical partner of course and we work together he knows that i love him very much if you're watching <laughs> and, and yeah you know, I was going to say, speaking of of uh, celebrities or, or, or stars on the record, also Mr. Billy Sheehan chipped in on the record, too. Yeah, he did. Actually, um, I don't know how I got in touch with Billy, but he said, oh, my God, that's very cool stuff. I love it. And he loved my voice. And I said, you want to jump in, you know, on a song? Because Mike LaPon recorded the whole album. Uh, again, you know, it's my second album, basically. I have a first one, sure. uh, Love Strikes Doves. And uh, he said, wow, uh, and I still have those emails and I can't believe. And the first impression when I got his uh, audio was like, oh, my God, this can be happening. This is like <laughs> out of this earth. This is alien base. This is not real base. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this guy played for me. <laughs> Great, you know. <laughs> I feel bad for your bass player that now has to learn those parts and, and try and emulate what Billy does. You don't have to emulate. You just have to be yourself. Billy does what he does, you know, and I do what I do. Everybody does what they're good at. So I'm not going to force anyone to play like Billy. I mean, he's a god. He's the bass god. Let's admit it. He is like extremely talented. As I say, out of this earth, because I, I listened to the isolated stems. Yeah. And he was sort of like, wow, what is this? I was trying to really understand and dive deep into it was more of like uh robotic at the same time with feeling at the same time with with rhythm at the same time with groove at like i couldn't even describe it so i say like okay the other bass players have to be really you know <laughs> good luck <laughs> but that's fine. good luck guys <laughs> And we should give a shout out to Billy because he's out there right now with Mr. Big on their final farewell tour. 
yeah, I think they're gonna be in LA also. Well, I'm in LA. That's yes, we're gonna meet definitely. Looking forward to that, and uh, you know, so many great songs on the album. The title track, "Good Trip to Hell," "Do or Do Not." Do you play any instruments on the on the album? Not on the album, but I'm a guitar player, and I wrote like uh, all of it note by note, basically. Oh, wow. So. I'm actually a good guitar player. Why I don't play, people ask me. Yeah. I like having nails on. <laughs> Lita Ford pulls it off somehow. Probably pulls Yeah, I mean, I've had a crazy idea. Like I play a show and then I cut my nails and then I go backstage and then I play again guitar. That's too much of a mess, you know, but I, I just focus, I'm trying to focus on on my role, which is to be the performer singer and then everything else. Well, you know, since I mentioned her, we should probably get into it. Uh, she's going to be there along with you. The Rock for Ronnie at Warner Center Park, Woodland Hills, California on Sunday, May 19th. Quiet Riot, Lita Ford, Dio Disciples, a whole bunch. You're going to be there as well and all for free. And, uh, of course, people can donate because it's for the Stand Up and Shout Cancer Fund. Yes, of course. It's all for a good cause. And most of the people that we are there, we have lost relatives. I've lost my grandma. One of the reasons that, that I'm trying to support as much as I can also is because she meant the world to me. And now she's gone. And there is not really pretty much a big explanation how this cancer gets into people like and the mutations and all that stuff. If you uh, consider that we have discovered DNA later on. <laughs> It's not, it's recently discovered that DNA, we didn't know that before. So uh, we're still evolving. Let's just hope that there is some type of cure. Yeah, yeah. And and events like this certainly help and put money towards it. And, you know, uh, speaking of, of Dio, killer cover of Children of the Sea uh, that you did. How Where did you film that at? Because I saw the video too, out, out on Lakeside. Yeah, it's actually here in Greece uh, at, a, at the sea, basically. So. <laughs> Just children of the sea so i said okay i'm gonna go for a walk to today so why not filming the song at the same time so i just called my videographer and say hey you want to do this and yeah i'm up for it okay let's do it and uh yeah but i always take seriously you know the words that i sing uh i'm not gonna say unlike most singers because there are people that they really speak what they feel and they sing what they feel but what i really think that people understand and get the feeling from me is that I really mean what I say on the mic, you know? Exactly. So it comes directly from the heart, if I can be <laughs> understood. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you got to, I mean, that's where it all begins. I mean, the voice is one thing, but believability is another, you know, with the singer, you have to believe what they're saying or else it's no, you could have the best voice in the world. It's not going to matter. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You have to mean what you say. You have to feel it and you have to pass it through the others because the job is not only to just sing it for yourself, but to pass it on the others inside their heads, their bodies. You know, that is all about the music. And our basic like, job is not only entertaining, but passing the message. And uh, if it's uh, cultural, poetic, fun, everything to pass it through the other person's brains, you know. You know, speaking of Dio, I have a little little Dio debate. I got to get your pick on because uh, I mean, it, it comes down to his two biggest hits. I mean, it's Rainbow in the Dark versus Holy Diver. If you had to pick one of those two, which oh, one would it be? Uh, difficult one. That's a difficult one. Okay, I have been playing Rainbow in the Dark uh, on my shows, on my tours with my band. So oh. you know, a lot Rainbow in the Dark. But I have I have played also Holy Diver a lot. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think that Rainbow in the Dark is more, more sentimental and it speaks more to my heart. Nah. Uh, based on the lyrics, not the music is both great, you know, but I like Rainbow in the Dark. Awesome. Awesome. And looking forward to the show. How, how long of a set are you going to get at the uh, Rock for Ronnie? Uh, how long? Uh, is that a surprise or what? <laughs> no, I'm saying, saying how long of a set do you get? How long are you going to get to play at the Rock for Ronnie? You're performing that day, right? Yeah, I know, but this is a surprise. Oh, <laughs> this is supposed to be a surprise, like how many songs and what songs and stuff. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot say much, much. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, it's going to air the day before, so it, it'll be under wraps until the night before. Okay. Nice. That's nice.
And I imagine it's going to be a big day for you, not only being there for the cancer fund, but like we mentioned before, Lita Ford and, and getting to see her. I imagine she's a big influence on you as well. Yeah, I, li I like her songs a lot. I met her at NAM 2019. We were there, you know, with uh, each one of us with our companies and stuff. And right. she was nice. She was now nah, we get to I think we will get to know each other more. And that's great. I love that. I can't wait to meet the guys and have fun. <laughs> and any tour plans in the U.S. besides besides this? Any Anything brewing? Oh, we have uh, things cooking. We have things on the table, but it's mostly for 2025. Not not this year, unfortunately, because all of that in the U.S. takes time. You know it. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. Uh, we will announce, by the way, that's different. A UK tour. Uh, since it's gonna air the day before, I can say that. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna tour with Kings of Frass, David Ellison, Chris Poland oh, uh, cool. in the UK. Over. So that's good news that we have that now. Uh, more things coming, you know, it's just uh, it's, it's a matter of time, I guess. Sure, sure. It makes sense. But well, congratulations on the Kings of Thrash tour. That'll be excellent. And, you know, keeping yeah. it in the thrash world for a second, because we're an old school radio station. We do a feature called Mandatory Metallica, where every night at 10 o'clock we play a bunch of Metallica. So uh, you're going to be a part of that. And I'm curious, you're a Metallica fan then, right? I like Metallica. I can sing Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been having this uh, this Metallica debate lately, like we did with the songs, but this one's more of an album debate. It's Ride the Lightning, their second album, versus the third album, the next one, Master of Puppets. Uh, I would say I like Master of Puppets. Oh, I would say I like that sometimes I change the lyrics and I call it the mistress of Puppets. <laughs> Female empowerment, you know, we're promoting that. So, and then sometimes I call it like, uh, uh, call him stress, your life's in distress. No, 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 no. I'll be your mistress, you know, and it's like, <laughs> I make it more like a BDSM song just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, and, and now there's no question. I was going to ask you what song to play, but now I have to play Master <laughs> Puppets. Now you have to play Master of Cubs. You have no choice. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for the time, then. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, too. Yay. Have a good one. Bye-bye.